Hi YouTube, welcome to another edition of Horror Hands and for this video I was going to go through all of my Blue Underground Blu-rays and DVDs. I recently went through all my Anchor Bay titles and really enjoyed going over some of the, the old films that I've got so I thought I'd do the same with, with Blue Underground. And a bit like Anchor Bay I've not seen some of these films for a long time so please forgive me if I, I can't give a, a full candid account of what each one's about but the first movie is a blade in the dark and right right off the bat i can't remember much about this movie i know it takes place in like a villa and there's like a killer going around killing people it's a it's an interesting giallo slasher type film certainly worth a watch it's been that long that i can't remember too much about what it's what it's like next one is bad boy bubby which someone actually lent me many years ago and I didn't like it at all I had no plans of even buying it but a few years ago I was at this like tiny little charity thing and they were selling these real like standard DVDs it was like exercise DVDs and things like that and amongst them was this and I was like I can't not take a Blue Underground DVD so yeah I bought this and and I rewatched it at some point and found I enjoyed it slightly more so maybe this is one that will get better with repeated viewings. Next movie is Black Belly of the Tarantula. Uh, good movie, but again, I can't really remember too much about it. These Jello films, I kind of forget a lot of the details of what actually happens in the film. They're all really cool films, but I just forget which one's which. But I, I do distinctly remember thinking this this was a surprisingly, surprisingly good one. I did enjoy it. Next film is The Black Cat, Lucio Fulci film. And this one kind of gets a lot of bad reviews. A lot of people seem to not like this one, but I really enjoyed it. I like that it takes place in the in the English countryside. And they were going to cast Peter Cushing in this film, but he wasn't a huge fan of the extreme violence and gore that Lucio Fulci was known for. So... They got Patrick McGee instead, who is great in this film. Uh, yeah, I, I I really enjoy it. A lot of people don't seem to, but I did like it. Next movie is Blood of Fu Manchu. Got a couple of Fu Manchu films under the Blue Underground label. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Decent enough film. Next is Bloodstained Shadow. I've not actually watched this all the way through. I have started to watch it, but for whatever reason i couldn't couldn't get through it all. i had to go and do something so yeah i need to go back and watch this in full because it it started out really well next one is the bloody the bloody judge jeff franco film signed christopher lee pretty decent film a little bit trashy but not that that's a bad thing and it is jeff franco so it's to be expected but yeah pretty cool film Next up is Cannibal Man. I really enjoy this film. It's not the gore fest that the title and the cover would suggest. This one's much more of a slow burner, almost like a character study of this guy that he like accidentally kills someone and is trying to cover his tracks, but people keep stumbling upon what he's doing or coming into his apartment and he in turn has to kill them. So yeah, he's, he's like a very, very kind of apprehensive type killer um certainly nowhere near as as lurid as what it looks but i thought it was a really good film next one is castle of fu manchu decent enough film next film is circus of fear and if you watched my anchor bay video i i showed circus of horrors and i explained that i can't i always get these two films mixed up i can't remember which is circus of horrors and what circus of fears and even now looking at it i can't quite differentiate which one's which and what happens but both movies are really good but they're really worth checking out next one is conquest this is like a sword and sorcery type film directed by lucio Fulci. so you have like the conan style film but with the lucio Fulci extreme gore and violence so it's an interesting combination next movie is contamination 
I really like this movie. I think it's very entertaining. I have a lot of fun watching it. I think it's quite underrated, but then it is quite a derivative film. So whether that stops it from getting sort of a lot of critical acclaim, I'm not sure. But I really, really, really like Contamination. Next one is Daughters of Darkness. Again, it's one that I've not seen for a long time. I remember it having a lot of nice sort of locations. There's a lot of like quite um, lavish, aristocratic type settings, which is always nice, nice to see. Makes a nice atmosphere. So yeah. Next one is Dead and Buried. Uh, I love Dead and Buried. I think it's a fantastic film. It's it was uh, one of the original video nasties in the UK. It was banned, but it has such a glossy look to it, such a nice production uh, in this film, and it's 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 quite an oldie fashioned feeling type film. It looks like it could come from come from like the forties or fifties, but but then the violence in it is quite quite extreme. It is quite unsettling uh, because it's it's like the locals in this in this village. They kind of kill the outsiders so there's scenes of like a group of locals or like can be quite elderly people like besieging people and lynching them and killing them so it really does deliver in the in the violence aspect but it's such a well-made as i say very glossy feeling film highly recommended if you've not seen dead and buried certainly check it out next movie is death line pretty cool film uh, I like that this kind of mixes like Victorian style London and what was then modern day 70s type London and uh, yeah starring Christopher Lee and Donald Pleasant so can't go wrong with a cast like that. Next movie is Down which is a killer elevator film but not as ridiculous as it, as it might sound it's a really well made film. By a guy called Dick Maas, who I believe is a German director. I'm not 100%, though. Apologies if that's wrong. <clears throat> and this is kind of like a, an unofficial sequel to another film we did called The Lift. Um, I've not seen that film. It's just, just a case of trying to get hold of that one. But this one's really good. Really good film. Very entertaining. Quite action-packed in places. Did feel sorry for the blind guy and his dog, who they get pulled down the elevator shaft. But... Yeah, interesting cast as well. You've got Naomi Watts, Michael Ironside, Edward Herman, Ron Perlman, Dan Hidaya. So, yeah, really, really cool film. I enjoyed Down. Next one is Eugenie, or Eugenie, the story of her journey into perversion. So, that says it all. Again, Christopher Lee's in this movie. Strange film for him to do, but uh, entertaining enough. Next movie is Fight for Your Life. This one kind of gets a lot of controversy because of the, the racial element. I, I don't think it's a racist film. It does unfortunately have a very racist character. But in no way do you like identify with him or root for him. He's, he's such an unpleasant guy. And it's like if you watch this film, whether you're a black person or a white person, you, you just want to see this guy get his comeuppance, which he does at the end. So, yeah, no, it's not pleasant to hear all the racial slurs in this film, but it is a well-made film. I did like it as as a film of its time and that kind of thing. So, yeah. Next one is Hell of the Living Dead. Interesting movie. Um, mixes like zombies, cannibals, and a bit of Mondo footage as well. So there's quite a lot of stuff going on in this movie. It always makes me sm smile that the, the soldiers in this film are dressed exactly the same as the soldiers at the beginning of Dawn of the Dead. The ones in the blue like jumpsuit things, boiler suit things. So yeah, that, that always makes me laugh. They, they just look like they've wandered straight from the set of Dawn of the Dead. Next one is Inferno. Dario Argento movie. Massive fan of Dario Argento and really love Inferno. Um, I heard that he made this while he was ill. He had a really bad fever, which he says kind of transcends on the screen. You get all the, the rich colours and that kind of like represented his his feverish 
state at the time apparently so yeah interesting next movie is the killer nun uh, didn't like this one too much this one just didn't grab my attention at all it is one of the uh, uh, original video nasties in the UK but I didn't find this interesting at all Joe DeLosandro's in it but uh, he doesn't have a, a very big part in it and didn't bring enough in the movie to make it any more entertaining so yeah a bit of a disappointing one that one next movie is Macabre one of Lamberto Barber's earlier ones again been a while since I've seen this one but I remember it being being a, a good one um I won't say what it's what the twist is at the end but you've probably seen this anyway but yeah cool movie I say it's a twist, but to be honest, it, 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 this movie it, it kind of leads up to a, a shocking ending. But any kind of promotional picture of this kind of shows you what the movie is leading up to. Like the Arrow DVD had the image on the front cover, so it's kind of you kind of know what what's going on. But yeah, just in case you haven't seen it, next movie is Manhattan Baby, Lucio Fulci film. Again, this one can get quite a bit of criticism, but I thought it was okay. Not one of his best, but, but good enough. This one's got more of a supernatural feel to it than just like the full-on gore, which he, he was famous for doing. So, yeah. Next movie is Maniac. <laughs> now, I know this one gets a lot of love on YouTube. A lot of... You guys out there really, really like this film. I've only watched it once, and it was years ago, and I remember it being okay. I really need to watch it again just to kind of reevaluate my my feelings of this one because, like I said, I know a lot of you guys, you really like this film, and, yeah, I I need to rewatch it because it's been so long. I can't, can't really say too much about it. Next movie is Mark of the Devil. I really, really like this film. It's a really, really good film. Still has quite a bit of uh, unpleasant moments in it that still stand up now. A lot of scenes are like torture and stuff, which are still look quite convincing. And I think it's just a really well-made film. Great cast, Udo Kier, Reggie Nalda, Herbert Lom. So, yeah, you can't go wrong with that. Uh, yeah, really, really like Mark of the Devil. Next is, I have Mondo Kane on its own, but then I also have the full Mondo Kane collection. So you've got Mondo Kane, Mondo Kane 2, you've got two versions of Africa Radio, two versions of, two versions of Goodbye Uncle Tom, Women of the World, and a documentary called The Godfathers of Mondo. So, yeah, this is a long out of print box set but my girlfriend actually got me this for christmas so massive props to her for even finding this and then and then buying it so yeah awesome it's interesting set of films if you don't know what these are they're like real life documentaries from the 60s and 70s and they show all kinds of bizarre practices rituals executions poaching things like that and they range from like interesting to kind of funny to absolutely gut-wrenching so yeah mixed bag of, of films next up is mountain of the cannibal god i'm a big fan of this film this has all the traditional elements of a cannibal film but it, it also has like a bit of a like a indiana jones adventure feel to it too so yeah highly entertaining Next movie is The Nesting. I don't remember too much about this one. I, I know it was a, a very, very slow burner. So you do have to stick with this one. There's not a lot happens in it. But quite atmospheric from what I remember. But I know I was struggling a bit with this one. It is very, very slow. So bear that in mind. Next movie is The New York Ripper. Whoops. Really like this film. Great Lucio Fulci movie. One of the very controversial film for its killings and kind of violence against women, that kind of thing. But I thought it was a good film. I thought it was a well-made film. Next movie is Night Train Murders. 
So this one is about these two teenage girls that they're, they're traveling on this train late at night and these these dogs kind of go into the carriage with them and they like rape them and torture them and, and murder them. And then following that, these same criminals, they take refuge with the parents of one of the girls. So you may think that is very, very similar to Last House on the Left and, and you'd be correct. And this came out just after Last House on the Left. But interestingly, the director of this film, is it Aldo Lardo? Yeah, Aldo Lardo. He claims he's never seen Last House. So, interesting. Next movie is The Prowler. A fantastic 80s slasher movie. This is about this killer who goes around with a pitchfork. And it's got Tom Savini special effects. So we get some really convincing death scenes in, in this film. Highly recommended. I really like The Prowler. Yeah, top, top slasher movie. Next up is Rats, uh, Night of Terror. And this one, I just remember having really bad dubbing. The dialogue in this movie is just so laughable. Um, sadly, that's the main thing I can remember from this film. I don't remember too much of, of what goes on, but it's kind of like a post-apocalyptic type film but with, with killer rats. Yeah, don't remember, don't remember too much about that one. Next one is Seven Deaths in the Cat's Eye. This is a Jello type film. Again, I don't remember too much about it. It has quite an intricate storyline from what I do remember. Um, yeah, I definitely need to give this a, a rewatch. Next movie is Shock which is credited as being directed by Mario Barba, but I believe he did get ill whilst making this. So his son, Lamberto Barba, he stepped in. But it's kind of cool that you get both of them working on one movie, and it's a really good film. I, I enjoyed Shock. It's, uh, it's a good one. Next movie is Shock Waves. I remember seeing this when I was much younger, many, many years ago, and thinking it was it was okay. But I think, if I'm honest, I may have been a bit dismissive about this film, so I really need to give this a rewatch when I get a chance. Um, yeah, it does get a very good review, so I think I may have just not have been, I don't know, giving it my full attention or appreciating it as, as much as I should. Next film is the Shockumentary collection. So again, this is just another Mondo Kane collection. This has Africa Radio and... Goodbye Uncle Tom and didn't really plan to get this but I saw this for ridiculously cheap this was like single figures and I know it's long out of print so just just picked it up and added it to the collection next movie is The Stendhal Syndrome and I'm not a huge fan of this film I do love Dario Argento he's one of my favorite directors of all time but I really struggled to get into this one I've only seen it the once and it was when I first got it on blu-ray so it would have been a couple of years ago but yeah i i struggled with this i'll probably give it a, a another watch at some point but yeah i didn't didn't get into it Re really wanted to like it but but just couldn't get into that one next one is the toolbox murders uh this one i first saw this when i was young and wasn't too impressed with it i didn't like it all that much but I've watched it a few more times over the years, and it's grown on me. And I, I do, I do like this move, this movie. So this is kind of like one which, for me, it just improves the more that I watch it, which is always nice. Next movie is Torso, and some of these movies I wish I could remember them more. I know I watched this and really liked it. It kind of took me by surprise. I didn't didn't think I'd like it all that much. But it was a really good film. <clears throat> Next movie is Two Evil Eyes. Now this film I thought was okay. I know a lot of people really like this film, but I think I probably expected maybe I maybe bigged it up too much in my mind because it's directed by Dario Argento and George Romero. It's like you know two horror icons coming together. It it's okay. I just was expecting a bit more it, it certainly doesn't reach the the heights that either director reached so it's you know it's nowhere near as good as Suspiria or Dawn of the Dead respectively 
but it's okay entertaining enough it's just it's not one that i would put at the top of either of the um filmographies if you will uh next one is uncle sam okay it's not bad next one is vampires cool movie these two women just go around the countryside like seducing men and then and then killing them and drinking the blood and just general vampiric activities i do like this one it's a good film next one is venom this is a good one it's in interesting it's been a while since i've watched it but these like convicts they they get in this house and they take this kid prisoner and then they have like a hostage uh, negotiation situation with the police but at the same time there's a, a killer snake in the house so it didn't take the path that I thought it would I didn't know there'd be anything about like the the kid being taken hostage in the standoff with the police I I thought it'd be a more of a kind of mindless killer snake film but this one has a lot more to it than that great great cast as well Klaus Kinski, Sterling Hayden, uh, Nicole Williamson Susan George, Oliver Reed, so yeah, fantastic cast. Next one is Vigilante, which I, I really like. So this is Robert Forster and Fred Williamson. Amazing cast right there. This one, I think Robert Forster, his, his wife gets murdered by these gang members and they, they, they get acquitted, they get off with a crime. I think, is it Joe Spinell plays a lawyer or something? They have a really sleazy lawyer. I may have got that wrong, I don't know. But they get off of the crime, so Robert Forster goes after them vigilante style. So, yeah, really cool movie. And then the last one for my Blue Underground collection is Zombie. This is the is it ulti the Ultimate Edition Blu-ray, which uh, I really like. They have just done the new holographic... 4k blu-rays but i bought this movie so many times i don't want to keep buying it so i think i'll, I'll stick to this one i don't like to double dip all that much because there's so many other films that i want to get so yeah i'm really happy with this blu-ray it's an awesome blu-ray awesome film i love it so yeah so that is all my blue underground dvds and blu-rays so thank you very much for watching please comment and let me know what you think of any of those films whether you agree with what I said or disagree and stay tuned for more videos.